Nubia was a region along the Nile River encompassing the area between Aswan in southern Egypt and Khartoum in central Sudan. It was the seat of one of the earliest civilizations of ancient Africa, with a history that can be traced from at least 2500 BC onward with the Kerma culture. The latter was conquered by the New Kingdom of Egypt under Pharaoh Thutmose I around 1500 BC. Nubia was home to several empires, most prominently the Kingdom of Kush, which conquered Egypt during the 8th century BC during the reign of Piye and ruled the country as its 25th dynasty to be replaced a century later by the native Egyptian 26th dynasty. The collapse of Kush in the 4th century AD after more than a thousand years of existence was precipitated by an invasion by Ethiopia's Kingdom of Aksum and saw the rise of three Christian kingdoms, Nobatia, Makuria and Elodia, the last two again lasting for roughly a millennium. Their eventual decline initiated not only the partition of Nubia into the northern half conquered by the Ottomans and the southern half by the Senar Sultanate in the 16th century, but also a rapid Islamization and partial Arabization of the Nubian people. Nubia was again united under the Khedivate of Egypt in the 19th century. Today, the region of Nubia is split between Egypt and Sudan. The primarily archaeological science dealing with ancient Nubia is called Nubiology. Linguistics <inaudible> 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 The name Nubia is derived from that of the Noba people, nomads who settled the area in the 4th century CE following the collapse of the Kingdom of Meroe. The Noba spoke a Nilo-Saharan language, ancestral to Old Nubian. Old Nubian was mostly used in religious texts dating from the 8th and 15th centuries. Before the 4th century, and throughout classical antiquity, Nubia was known as Kush, or, in classical Greek usage, included under the name Ethiopia, Ethiopia. Historically, the people of Nubia spoke at least two varieties of the Nubian language group, a subfamily that includes Nobin the descendant of Old Nubian, Kenuzi Dongola, Midib and several related varieties in the northern part of the Nuba Mountains in South Kordofan. Until at least 1970, the Burjid language was spoken north of Niala in Darfur, but is now extinct. However, linguistic evidence indicates that the languages spoken in the ancient Kerma culture present-day southern Egypt and northern Sudan in Nubia, belong to the Cushitic branch of the Afroasiatic languages. Geography <laughs> 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 Nubia was divided into three major regions, Upper, Middle and Lower Nubia, in reference to their locations along the Nile. Lower refers to regions downstream and upper refers to regions upstream. Lower Nubia lay between the first and the second cataracts, within the current borders of Egypt. Middle Nubia lay between the second and the third cataracts. Upper Nubia lay south of the third cataract. History Prehistory. Early settlements sprouted in both Upper and Lower Nubia. Egyptians referred to Nubia as Ta Seti or the Land of the Bow, since the Nubians were known to be expert archers. Modern scholars typically refer to the people from this area as the A Group culture. Fertile farmland just south of the Third Cataract is known as the Pre Kerma culture in Upper Nubia, as they are the ancestors. The Neolithic people in the Nile Valley likely came from Sudan, as well as the Sahara, and there was shared culture with the two areas and with that of Egypt during this period. By the 5th millennium BC, the people who inhabited what is now called Nubia participated in the Neolithic Revolution. Saharan rock reliefs depict scenes that have been thought to be suggestive of a cattle cult, typical of those seen throughout parts of eastern Africa and the Nile Valley even to this day. Megaliths discovered at Nabta Playa are early examples of what seems to be one of the world's first astronomical devices, predating Stonehenge by almost 2,000 years. This complexity as observed at Nabta Playa, and as expressed by different levels of authority within the society there, likely formed the basis for the structure of both the Neolithic society at Nabta and the Old Kingdom of Egypt. Around 3500 BC, the second Nubian Culture, termed the A group, arose. It was a contemporary of, and ethnically and culturally very similar to, the polities in predynastic Nakeda of Upper Egypt. 
The A group people were engaged in trade with the Egyptians. This trade is testified archaeologically by large amounts of Egyptian commodities deposited in the graves of the A group people. The imports consisted of gold objects, copper tools, faience amulets and beads, seals, slate pallets, stone vessels, and a variety of pots. Around 3300 BC, there is evidence of a unified kingdom, as shown by the finds at Kustal, that maintained substantial interactions both cultural and genetic with the culture of Nakaden Upper Egypt. The Nubian culture may have even contributed to the unification of the Nile Valley. Toby Wilkinson, based on work by Bruce Williams in the 1980s, wrote that, "...the White Crown, associated in historic times with Upper Egypt, is first attested later than the Red Crown, but is directly associated with the ruler somewhat earlier. The earliest known depiction of the White Crown is on a ceremonial incense burner from cemetery at Kustal in Lower Nubia." Based on a 1998 excavation report, Jane Roy has written that, at the time of William's argument, the Kustal Cemetery and the Royal iconography found there was dated to the Nakeda IIIA period, thus antedating royal cemeteries in Egypt of the Nakeda IIIB phase. New evidence from Abydos, however, particularly the excavation of Cemetery U and the Tome UJ, dating to Nakeda IIIA has shown that this iconography appears earlier in Egypt. Around the turn of the protodynastic period, Nakeda, in its bid to conquer and unify the whole Nile Valley, seems to have conquered Ta Seti the kingdom where Kustal was located and harmonized it with the Egyptian state. Thus, Nubia became the first gnome of Upper Egypt. At the time of the First Dynasty, the A group area seems to have been entirely depopulated, most likely due to immigration to areas west and south. This culture began to decline in the early 28th century BC. George Reisner suggested that it was succeeded by a culture that he called the B Group, but most archaeologists today believe that this culture never existed and that the area was depopulated from c. 3000 BC to c. 2500, when a group descendants returned to the area. The causes of this are uncertain, but it was perhaps caused by Egyptian invasions and pillaging that began at this time. Nubia is believed to have served as a trade corridor between Egypt and tropical Africa long before 3100 BC. Egyptian craftsmen of the period used ivory and ebony wood from tropical Africa which came through Nubia. In 2300 BC, Nubia was first mentioned in Old Kingdom Egyptian accounts of trade missions. From Aswan, right above the first cataract, the southern limit of Egyptian control at the time, Egyptians imported gold, incense, ebony, copper, ivory, and exotic animals from tropical Africa through Nubia. As trade between Egypt and Nubia increased, so did wealth and stability. By the Egyptian Sixth Dynasty, Nubia was divided into a series of small kingdoms. There is debate over whether these C group peoples, who flourished from c. 2500 BC to c. 1500 BC, were another internal evolution or invaders. There are definite similarities between the pottery of the A group and C group, so it may be a return of the ousted group as, or an internal revival of lost arts. At this time, the Sahara Desert was becoming too arid to support human beings, and it is possible that there was a sudden influx of Saharan nomads. C group pottery is characterized by all over incised geometric lines with white infill and impressed imitations of basketry. During the Egyptian Middle Kingdom c. 2040-1640 BC, Egypt began expanding into Nubia to gain more control over the trade routes in northern Nubia and direct access to trade with southern Nubia. They erected a chain of forts down the Nile below the second cataract. These garrisons seemed to have peaceful relations with the local Nubian people, but little interaction during the period. A contemporaneous but distinct culture from the C group was the Pan Grave culture, so called because of their shallow graves. The Pan Graves are associated with the east bank of the Nile, but the Pan Graves and C group definitely interacted. Their pottery is characterized by incised lines of a more limited character than those of the C group, generally having interspersed undecorated spaces within the geometric schemes. Topic. Nubia and Ancient Egypt Topic. One interpretation is that Nubian A group rulers and early Egyptian pharaohs used related royal symbols. Similarities in rock art of A group Nubia and Upper Egypt support this position. 
Ancient Egypt conquered Nubian territory in various eras, and incorporated parts of the area into its provinces. The Nubians in turn were to conquer Egypt under its 25th dynasty. However, relations between the two peoples also show peaceful cultural interchange and cooperation, including mixed marriages. The Medjai MJ3 represents the name ancient Egypt gave to a region in northern Sudan where an ancient people of Nubia inhabited. They became part of the Egyptian military as scouts and minor workers. During the Middle Kingdom of Egypt, Medjai no longer referred to the district of Medja but to a tribe or clan of people. It is not known what happened to the district, but, after the first intermediate period of Egypt, it and other districts in Nubia were no longer mentioned in the written record. Written accounts detail the Medjai as nomadic desert people. Over time, they were incorporated into the Egyptian army. In the army, the Medjai served as garrison troops in Egyptian fortifications in Nubia and patrolled the deserts as a kind of gendarmerie. This was done in the hope of preventing their fellow Medjai tribespeople from further attacking Egyptian assets in the region. Later, they were even used during Kamoza's campaign against the Hyksos and became instrumental in making the Egyptian state into a military power. By the 18th dynasty of the New Kingdom period, the Medjai were an elite paramilitary police force. No longer did the term refer to an ethnic group, and, over time, the new meaning became synonymous with the policing occupation in general. Being an elite police force, the Medjai were often used to protect valuable areas, especially royal and religious complexes. Though they are most notable for their protection of the royal palaces and tombs in Thebes and the surrounding areas, the Medjai were known to have been used throughout Upper and Lower Egypt. Various pharaohs of Nubian origin are held by some Egyptologists to have played an important part towards the area in different eras of Egyptian history, particularly the 12th dynasty. These rulers handled matters in typical Egyptian fashion, reflecting the close cultural influences between the two regions. T. He 12th dynasty 1991 BCE originated from the Aswan region. As expected, strong Nubian features and dark coloring are seen in their sculpture and relief work. This dynasty ranks as among the greatest, whose fame far outlived its actual tenure on the throne. Especially interesting, it was a member of this dynasty that decreed that no Nessi, riverine Nubian of the Principality of Kush, except such as came for trade or diplomatic reasons, should pass by the Egyptian fortress and copse at the southern end of the Second Nile Cataract. Why would this royal family of Nubian ancestry ban other Nubians from coming into Egyptian territory? Because the Egyptian rulers of Nubian ancestry had become Egyptians culturally, as pharaohs, they exhibited typical Egyptian attitudes and adopted typical Egyptian policies. Your Co. 1989. In the New Kingdom, Nubians became indistinguishable in the archaeological record from Egyptians. It is an extremely difficult task to attempt to describe the Nubians during the course of Egypt's New Kingdom, because their presence appears to have virtually evaporated from the archaeological record. The result has been described as a wholesale Nubian assimilation into Egyptian society. This assimilation was so complete that it masked all Nubian ethnic identities insofar as archaeological remains are concerned beneath the impenetrable veneer of Egypt's material culture. In the Kushite period, when Nubians ruled as pharaohs in their own right, the material culture of Dynasty the 25th about 750 to 655 BCE was decidedly Egyptian in character. Nubia's entire landscape up to the region of the Third Cataract was dotted with temples indistinguishable in style and decoration from contemporary temples erected in Egypt. The same observation obtains for the smaller number of typically Egyptian tombs in which these elite Nubian princes were interred. Topic. Kerma From the pre-Kerma culture, the first kingdom to unify much of the region arose. The Kerma culture, named for its presumed capital at Kerma, was one of the earliest urban centers in the Nile region and spoke languages of the Cushitic branch. By 1750 BC, the kings of Kerma were powerful enough to organize the labor for monumental walls and structures of mud brick. They also had rich tombs, with possessions for the afterlife and large human sacrifices. George Andrew Reisner excavated sites at Kerma and found distinctive Nubian architecture such as large tombs and palace-like structures. At one point, Kerma came very close to conquering Egypt. Egypt suffered a serious defeat at the hands of the Kingdom of Kush. 
According to Davies, head of the Joint British Museum and Egyptian archaeological team, the attack was so devastating that, if the Kerma forces had chosen to stay and occupy Egypt, they might have eliminated it for good and brought the nation to extinction. When Egyptian power revived under the New Kingdom of Egypt c. 1532-1070 BC, Egyptians began to expand further southwards. The Egyptians destroyed Kerma's kingdom and capital and expanded the Egyptian empire to the Fourth Cataract. By the end of the reign of Thutmose I 1520 BC, all of northern Nubia had been annexed. The Egyptians built a new administrative center at Napata, and used the area to produce gold and incense. The Nubian gold production made Egypt a prime source of the precious metal in the Middle East. The primitive working conditions for the slaves are recorded by Diodorus Siculus, who saw some of the mines at a later time. One of the oldest maps known is of a gold mine in Nubia, the Turin Papyrus map dating to about 1160 BC. This map is also one of the earliest characterized road maps in existence. Kush Topic. Topic. Napatan period Topic. When the Egyptians pulled out of the Napata region, they left a lasting legacy that was merged with indigenous customs, forming the Kingdom of Kush. Archaeologists have found several burials in the area that seem to belong to local leaders. The Kushites were buried there soon after the Egyptians decolonized the Nubian frontier. Kush adopted many Egyptian practices, such as their religion. The Kingdom of Kush survived longer than that of Egypt, invaded Egypt under the leadership of King Piye, and controlled Egypt during the 8th century BC as the 25th dynasty of Egypt. The Kushites held sway over their northern neighbors for nearly 100 years, until they were eventually repelled by the invading Assyrians. The Assyrians forced them to move farther south, where they eventually established their capital at Meroe. Of the Nubian kings of this era, Tahaka is perhaps the best known. A son and the third successor of the founding pharaoh, Piye, he was crowned in Memphis, Egypt c. 690. Tahaka ruled over both Nubia and Egypt, restored Egyptian temples at Karnak, and built new temples and pyramids in Nubia before being driven from Egypt by the Assyrians. <laughs> Meroitic period Meroe 800 BC, c. AD 350 in southern Nubia lay on the east bank of the Nile, about 6 km northeast of the Kabushia station near Shendi, Sudan, ca. 200 km northeast of Khartoum. The people there preserved many ancient Egyptian customs, but were unique in many respects. They developed their own form of writing, first utilizing Egyptian hieroglyphs, and later using an alphabetic script with 23 signs. Since King Arakamani the kings were buried in Meroe. Achaemenid period The Achaemenids occupied the Kushan kingdom, possibly from the time of Cambyses circa 530 BCE, and more probably from the time of Darius I BCE, who mentions the conquest on Kush in his inscriptions. Strabo describes a clash with the Romans in which the Romans defeated Nubians. According to Strabo, following the Kushite advance, Gaius Petronius a prefect of Egypt at the time prepared a large army and marched south. The Roman forces clashed with the Kushite armies near Thebes and forced them to retreat to Selchus in Kushite lands. Petronius then sent deputies to the Kushites in an attempt to reach a peace agreement and make certain demands. Quoting Strabo, the Kushites, "...desired three days for consideration," in order to make a final decision. However, after the three days, Kush did not respond and Petronius advanced with his armies and took the Kushite city of Premnus modern Karanag south of Maharika. From there, he advanced all the way south to Napata, the second capital in Kush after Meroe. Petronius attacked and sacked Napata, causing the son of the Kushite queen to flee. Strabo describes the defeat of the Kushites at Napata, stating that, he Petronius made prisoners of the inhabitants. During this time, the different parts of the region divided into smaller groups with individual leaders, or generals, each commanding small armies of mercenaries. They fought for control of what is now Nubia and its surrounding territories, leaving the entire region weak and vulnerable to attack. 
Meroe would eventually meet defeat by the new rising kingdom of Aksum to their south under King Azana. The classification of the Meroitic language is uncertain, it was long assumed to have been one of the Afroasiatic languages like the Egyptian language, but is now considered to have likely been one of the Eastern Sudanic languages. At some point during the 4th century, the region was conquered by the Noba, from which the name Nubia may derive. Another possibility is that it comes from the Egyptian word for gold. From then on, the Romans referred to the area as Nobatia. Christian Nubia Topic. Around AD 350, the area was invaded by the Kingdom of Aksum and the Meroitic Kingdom collapsed. Eventually, three smaller Christian kingdoms replaced it. Northernmost was Nobatia between the first and second cataract of the Nile River, with its capital at Pachoras, modern day Faras. in the middle was Makuria, with its capital at Old Dongola, and southernmost was Elodia, with its capital at Soba. Near Khartoum. King Silky of Nobatia crushed the Blemies, and recorded his victory in a Greek inscription carved in the wall of the Temple of Talmes around AD 500. While Bishop Athanasius of Alexandria consecrated one Marcus as Bishop of Philae before his death in 373, showing that Christianity had penetrated the region by the 4th century, John of Ephesus records that a Monophysite priest named Julian converted the king and his nobles of Nobatia around 545. John of Ephesus also writes that the kingdom of Elodia was converted around 569. However, John of Biclarum records that the kingdom of Mercuria was converted to Catholicism the same year, suggesting that John of Ephesus might be mistaken. Further doubt is cast on John's testimony by an entry in the Chronicle of the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Alexandria Eutychius, which states that in 719 the Church of Nubia transferred its allegiance from the Greek to the Coptic Orthodox Church. By the 7th century, Makuria expanded becoming the dominant power in the region. It was strong enough to halt the southern expansion of Islam after the Arabs had taken Egypt. After several failed invasions the new rulers agreed to a treaty with Dongola, called Baqt, allowing for peaceful coexistence and trade. This treaty held for 600 years. Over time the influx of Arab traders introduced Islam to Nubia and it gradually supplanted Christianity. While there are records of a bishop at Khazar Ibram in 1372, his see had come to include that located at Faraz. It is also clear that the Cathedral of Dongola had been converted to a mosque in 1317. The influx of Arabs and Nubians to Egypt and Sudan had contributed to the suppression of the Nubian identity following the collapse of the last Nubian kingdom around 1504. A vast majority of the Nubian population is currently Muslim, and the Arabic language is their main medium of communication in addition to their indigenous Old Nubian language. The unique characteristic of Nubian is shown in their culture, dress, dances, traditions, and music. Islamic Nubia in the 14th century, the Dongolan government collapsed and the region became divided and dominated by Arabs. The next centuries would see several Arab invasions of the region, as well as the establishment of a number of smaller kingdoms. Northern Nubia was brought under Egyptian control, while the south came under the control of the Kingdom of Sennar in the 16th century. The entire region would come under Egyptian control during the rule of Muhammad Ali in the early 19th century, and later became a joint Anglo-Egyptian condominium. Topic contemporary issues topic With the end of colonialism and the establishment of the Republic of Egypt 1953, and the secession of the Republic of Sudan from unity with Egypt 1956, Nubia was divided between Egypt and Sudan. During the early 1970s, many Egyptian and Sudanese Nubians were forcibly resettled to make room for Lake Nasser after the construction of the dams at Aswan. Nubian villages can now be found north of Aswan on the west bank of the Nile and on Elephantine Island, and many Nubians now live in large cities, such as Cairo. Topic notes topic topic Further reading topic Adam, William Y. 1977, Nubia, Corridor to Africa, London. Bell, Herman 2009, Paradise Lost, Nubia before the 1964 Hijra, Dahl Group. Black Pharaohs, National Geographic, February 2008 Bouliot et al., 2001, Nubia, The Earth and Its Peoples, pp. 70-71, Houghton Mifflin Company, Boston. Drower M. 1970, Nubia A Drowning Land, London, Longmans. 
Emberling, Jeff 2011, Nubia, Ancient Kingdoms of Africa. New York, Institute for the Study of the Ancient World. Fisher, Marjorie, et al., 2012, Ancient Nubia, African Kingdoms on the Nile. The American University in Cairo Press. Hassan, Yusuf F. A. D. L. 1973, the Arabs and the Sudan, Khartoum. Jennings, Anne 1995, The Nubians of West Aswan, Village Women in the Midst of Change, Lynn Reiner Publishers. Thelwall, Robin 1978, Lexicostatistical Relations Between Nubian, Dahu and Dinka, Etudes Nubiens, Colloque de Chantilly, 2-6 Gilet 1975, 265-286. Thelwall, Robin 1982, Linguistic Aspects of Greater Nubian History, in Eret, C. and Poznansky, M. E. D. S., The Archaeological and Linguistic Reconstruction of African History. Berkeley, Los Angeles, 39-56. Torek, Laszlo The Kingdom of Kush, Handbook of the Napatan Meroitic Civilization. Brill Academic Publishers. Valbel, Dominique, and Bonnet, Charles 2006, The Nubian Pharaohs. New York, The American University in Cairo Press. Topic external links Topic African Kingdoms Ancient Sudan Website Racism and the Rediscovery of Ancient Nubia Medieval Sai Project Journey to Ethiopia, Eastern Sudan, and Nigrisha was written by Pierre Trimo in 1862-63. It features extensive descriptions and drawings of Nubia. 1960s Nubia Scrapbook.